Today's video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. From one true pairings to the unloved donkeys of the internet, everybody has a ship that they love, they have ones that they hate, and no show has more ships than hell of a boss. Where despite the limited cast, everyone ships everyone with everyone. And I do mean everyone. So for funsies, I figured we might as well take a look at the post bliss of fizzy supremacy to break down where I rank all these ships. I made a community post a while back and now I'm gonna make my call about where they all stack up, why people might like them, and why I don't. Nobody's ship is safe, as while I'm not gonna put any energy into telling people what not to ship, we'll still shame you for it. But no tier list is complete without tiers, so this is how I set up mine. But first, have you ever thought that somebody's out to get you? That no matter where you go, somebody is there watching you, recording your habits, and potentially selling them to somebody else. Well, I'm sorry to say, but that crazy theory is 100% true. The internet is what it is, but thankfully I have Atlas VPN to help keep all my information safe wherever I go on the web. And right now they are running a massive Black Friday Day sale, so there has never been a better time to try. Atlas VPN is truly a must, as with just a click of a button you're able to protect all your information from third party observers, get rid of all those annoying ads, and make it look like you're in a completely different country, allowing you to turn one subscription into all of them. I know for me personally, I was able to cancel my Crunchyroll subscription as now I can just use Japanese Netflix to watch Jujutsu Kaisen every week. Yeah, it's there, it has English subtitles, and it is so nice. Atlas VPN literally saved me money, and right now there has never been a better time to try. As right now, they are launching a massive Black Friday Day sale where you can get Atlas VPN Premium for $1.70 a month, and that price is going to be locked in for three and a half years. Not to mention their 30 day money back guarantee. There has never been a better time to protect your information and get all the extra benefits with Atlas VPN. So to make sure you get this ridiculously low rate, use the link down in the description or the QR code you see on the screen. There has never been a better time to try, but be sure to hurry up because this is for a limited time only. But I'm sure you won't regret it. So we got, of course, the top tier, no surprise, though the answer of who's in here may surprise you. This one is just for all my faves, but at the end of the list, we will boil down to the one ship to rule them all. As I'm not your dad, I don't have to pretend that I don't have a favorite. Then, just below them, we got problematic faves. Now I know this probably shouldn't be as high as it is, but frankly, saying you just like it is cowardly to me. It's like ranking something 7 out of 10. That's just a fancy way of saying 5. How you say it's okay without hurting any feelings. Well I say cry more. If you're gonna say you love something but won't say in polite company, guess what? It's a little problematic. So either say it with your chest, or get the fuck out. Also, the next tier is 7 out of 10. This is for everything that I fully like, but I just don't really have enough to make me love it. Yes, I'm broken inside and need some edge to really get up to that 8. It's how I roll. And just below that, we have C, the vision. This is for the ship that I, well, not fully love, maybe just kinda like. I can definitely see why other people may love it, either for the juicy character potential or just because it's hot. I'm not a complicated man, but I do have overly complicated thoughts. Moving on, from here on out, we just got the garbage, the trash, the things where the only difference is polite disagreement or blocking in mass, because I don't need that energy in my life. First is not for me. I can see why you like it, but while I can see the vision for some, this is the one where I'm just like, not even gonna pretend that I get the kink. But you do you, and I'll move on, which is probably the best interaction any stranger can have on the internet. You may not be wrong, but I'm just gonna smile and wave through most the fan art. I accept you. I respect your ability to choose this ship. But that's not this next tier, which is the less polite, nah bro, no. These are the ships where I feel like I gotta say something. If you come at me with one of these as your fave, I'm gonna tell you that this ship is not it, not for me, I am judging. But I've seen worse, so we'll leave it at that and I'm gonna move on. Which of course brings us to the final tier on this list, which is stop it. No bro, stop it, why would you post this? How would it even work? No amount of justification is gonna make this make sense to me. Some taboos are in place for a reason. Jerk off in your room and leave the rest of us alone. Stop writing comment justify it. I've already made the decision. No one's gonna change my mind. Now, that is all the tiers. This is the list. I put it together via people's posts, fan art, and just wild assumptions that it had to be a thing. So let's dive on in it and start spicy with Blitz x Striker. We could be the most dangerous beings in hell. Blitz. Wow, that was a good fucking pitch. 
Now this one is near and dear to a part of me that's not my heart. As yeah, they're hot. Striker is the worst parts of Blitz in cosplay, an angry racist who hates the rich for unknown reasons, with delusions of grandeur about killing the Goetia and being way more important than he actually is. Striker is Blitz without the crippling need for love and a sense of humor. So from the moment Striker pins Blitz to the wall and says Blitz should ditch Stolas, achieve his potential, and kill the royalty with him, I was like, yeah. This is gonna awaken something in some people. Blitz wasn't biting in the slightest, but for those who want to see Blitz move away from the melodrama of Stolitz, I can see Striker and Blitz being the next best thing, as it is the bad boy couple. Even though it leans into their worst tendencies, from Blitz trying to feel powerful rather than loved, to Striker doubling down on his own hype when he really is just not nearly as cool as he thinks he is. My real knock against this ship is that post-Western energy, Striker's bad boy stock has pretty much plumb in it, but it's also raised his rival status to Blitz, so we can get some rival to lover stuff in here and it would be perfect, as Blitz just keeps getting in Striker's way, leading to the former sexy bad boy to be taken less and less seriously, which eh, I kind of don't like that, but he also becomes more unhinged as he keeps seeing Blitz as a source of all of his issues. Plus, add in the spicy little detail that Blitz caused an explosion which might have given Stryker a matching scar to Blitz's. Bruh, I can see people falling back in love with these two just trying to kill each other. I'm sure somebody wants to write a story where they make each other better, but I'm all for them just making each other worse. So Stryker and Blitz, they are definitely my problematic faves. Though if we kept Norman Reus's voice, this would have had a shot at being top tier. Though it would have no chance at winning. But moving on to another rival of Blitz's, we got Blitz X and this is a very important detail, Robot Fizzarali. Does anybody love you? Fizzle. No. Yeah, we're getting real weird on this thing. But here's my logic. Blitz and Fizz did meet up for 15 years after the explosion that maimed the both of them. Some were a little worse off than others after this. But while the two would take a while to reconnect and hand wave away their whole conflict, Blitz did for a time work under a robotic Fizz or Raleigh, as at some point after his solo career burned down, Blitz was reduced to working on a day job at Lululand, playing second fiddle to a robotic copy of Fizz, who, to pardon my French, is a massive dick. <laughs> I guess the kitties are still running away from you, huh? While Fizz turned out to be a surprisingly soft boy we all know and love, Robot Fizz has all the prickly edges, demeaning Blitz, taking shots at him on sight, and Blitz makes it clear that the hate is mutual. While a little weird to ship Blitz with a copy of his former best friend, I honestly loved these two hating each other too much to ignore it. As like Striker, it feeds into some of Blitz's worst tendencies, while also allowing him to keep living in that place where he thinks of himself as unlovable. And while it would be unhealthy, that toxic validation he would get by hate-fucking this robot, like, it wouldn't make anything better, but at least he would know what he's getting into. Add in that little tantalizing fact that Blitz may have been in love with Fizz before he accidentally blew him up, then that would make Blitz's relationship with this robot, this proxy, even more strange and painful, as it would be the only way he can see himself getting close to the person that he used to love, but who he believes hates him for ruining his life, with Blitz believing that to a certain extent. It's a complicated grab bag of issues that I think taps into the sad broken world of Blitz as kind of no other ship can. As he would be loving what he can't have, the emphasis would be on the tragedy and seemingly unfixability of what happened between Blitz and Fizz, with this being the most ick inducing rebound you've ever seen. As if he couldn't have the original and didn't think he was even worthy of him, then the copy that he would have to pay to fill the void would be the next worst step. As really, it's not helping, it's just prolonging the pain, which is something I feel like the robot would just be sure to rub in. There is no happy ending with this one, and none of the fun bad boy vibes of Striker and Fizz, but I love the tragic ennui. So problematic phase it is. Next up, we got, and no, your eyes do not deceive you, though they might not be able to see it. This is Luna X Tex X Beelzebub. Yeah, we're doing throubles. As put aside all of your reservations, at this level, it's basically heart. Luna is an interesting character to ship for me, as well it's easy to ship her with well, anybody, because self-insert and the fan art is fire. I've never really felt a strong need for her to be in any real romantic relationship. 
and she seemed like she would get more out of a friend group and figuring herself out than banging another random wolf. But even I can't deny the vision of these three together. As yeah, Luna crushed on the hot, confident older man who was already dating up. So if you wanted this to happen, so if you want this to happen, you might as well throw Luna into that honey trap since B is the sin of gluttony and excess. She'd probably be down for this. Now I got more to say about Luna with the other two individually, but at the moment I think most of my thoughts are just, it's hot. I don't really see a specific reason why this throuple needs to happen outside of porn plots. So yeah, the vulnerable angry girl being taken by the more mature and experienced couple is going to see the vision, as that's kind of just it. Looks. Moving on, we got another throuple with the cherubs. I didn't plan this. I tried to make things as random as possible by putting in random names for each file. But here we are. A lot of blitz in the first row. But the cherubs are, like, I want to put them in stop it because they are that irrelevant to me. They are essentially interchangeable outside of Colin being the team bitch. So unless seeing someone become respected by their belithers is your kink, I just don't see it. So because I'm spiteful, nah, bro. Okay, this one is actually fun. Verasica x Blitz. God damn it, whore, you will not let that go. Choke on a sandpaper cock. So Verasica x Blitz is fascinating, as all evidence points to Blitz being kind of a his worst at this point. He was probably Vraska's sugar baby, who parted his brains out only to nuke their relationship by mistreating her, with him in hindsight recognizing that. And this all just gives you plenty of options to choose from. From looking at them as just the past, where they were just baddies together, or you can view it as a healing story in the present about Blitz admitting his mistakes, with Vraska being able to let go of her anger and chill out, with us finally getting to see the person beneath all that spite. I'm partial to either. Vraska is perfect, so this will always be for me. But I think personally, the potential is there. But I think the potential is a little bit unformed. So while the chemistry is there, I'm not sure I really want to put them in problematic faves. Though I might be hesitant just because my bias is way too obvious obvious this early on. <laughs> um, fuck it, Roscoe would be an amazing stepmom to Luna. Faves it is. Next we got Moxie and Stryker. Now, you'd think this would be a little bit of repeating Stryker x Blitz, and you'd be right and wrong, as while these two are bad boys doing bad things, I think Moxie and Stryker would somehow be even more toxic, as Stryker is a hybrid with some serious self-hatred issues, while Moxie is a mafia heir who never felt at home anywhere he's ever been, as he was just too comfortable showing his emotions and being fruity for the Mafia, while also not being the manly man Wrath wanted. Moxie has spent his whole life coming up short, which makes it interesting to pair him up with Stryker, who is by all accounts the Wrathian ideal. Later though, it does seem like this is a persona that Stryker intentionally leans into, creating some interesting conflict and intrigue if they were to hook up, as Moxie is everything Stryker hates about being an imp, that perception that you're not strong enough, that they are vermin in the food chain of hell, with him showing a lot of the same racist tendencies that he claims to hate. So what I'm detecting is a bit of opposites attract here, where you can have the dysfunction of them being together and the obvious abuse edging that people eat up. You know who you are, it's fiction. It's mostly fine. I can see the two of them growing to appreciate each other, with this in turn correcting the long-held self-hatred issues that plagues the both of them. That Moxie can earn the respect of the most mass cowboy in hell, and that he can do it without changing who he is. That who he is is in fact good enough, and that his shitty dad and home life were all wrong, gaining the validation he so desperately craves from authority figures. Meanwhile, Stryker realizes he respects Moxie, meaning that he can finally let go of the facade of toughness that he has spent his whole life creating. That he's also good enough as he is and doesn't have to keep pretending to be anything else. That he is also an imp, that he's imperfect, that he doesn't have to resent his own kind to puff himself up with false pride. That his mentality about imps and royals are racist and it's not that he's just as bad as them, but that believing this stuff or trying to reject it has only ever affected him negatively in more ways than he could imagine. We do have to ignore the whole Millie is married to Moxie thing here to make it work. You can also imagine these two are just a bickering old couple. Either option works and shipping is built around ignoring the facts to focus on the potential, so I'm gonna ignore the part where they clearly hate each other and put them in problematic phase. Alright, now for one that actually sucks, Agent 1 and 2. I mean, does anyone actually ship these two together? This feels like a safe assumption that they're dating because straights but I don't know if anyone actually cares. The two humans who captured Blitz and Moxie drugged their asses, then ate popcorn as the boys were tripping balls. These two are just a safe assumption. They could be a thing, they could not be, but since I can't be 
bother to look up which one is one or two. I'm just gonna put them in, not for me. Nothing wrong with it. Maybe something about the girl recovering after the possession. Or maybe while the other one's growing more obsessed with capturing the imps to save their legacy. I think there are avenues you could take, but frankly, you are putting in way more of yourself than anything the show did. So this is a couple that might as well just be OCs. And I suspect the fanfiction will change the names midway through, as it pretty quickly stopped being about the show almost immediately. They're not for me, but they're inoffensive. But speaking of offensive, I know, it stings, doesn't it? But here's my deal. Well, I think it's fascinating how Blitz potentially used to love Fizz, and how that might have affected his psyche after the incident. Seeing them as a couple doesn't really do much for me. Like, congrats, they're healing. By this point in the story, Fizz is already healed, leaving Blitz to be the one doing most of the work. You take Oops out of the equation, then we're basically dealing with another rival relationship for Blitz. This one doesn't have the same fatalistic or tox elements that make me actually really want to see what would happen. Childhood romances are all well and good, but Blitz fighting Fizz again and making amends, you actually have to start changing the can to make that a bigger issue, or make Fizz the one checking in on Blitz after he starts spiraling after, who knows, maybe getting rejected by Stolas. But at that point, you can kind of have anybody in the role and it would play out pretty much the same. I like Robot Fizz more because it it has a very specific situation of, I can't have this, so I'm trapping myself with a copy, as Blitz just can't move on. Blitz just dating Fizz just feels okay. It worked out. Love triumphed, and we can make up for lost time. To get these two into a relationship that is healthy, you pretty much have to unravel all the issues that kept them apart. And all those issues are why I specifically like their dynamic. As this might be unpopular, while I enjoy Blitz having somebody from his past that he can banter with, whenever they're together, it's nothing special to me. Blitz being snarky and having insight to who the other person is, isn't unique. He does that with Moxie, Stolas, Veraska, pretty much everyone. It's part of his charm. With Fizz, he is equally snarky back, which weirdly gives me an emotional plateau, where I like them together, it's fun, but I know I'm not gonna get anything great or awful by the time they split up. They can be great on their own. Together though, it's just okay. So I'm gonna be polite with that 7 out of 10, as I think there's something here. That is, touch the hearts of millions, but it treads on territory that pretty much every relation that Blitz has does better in some respect. As Blitz and Solus already have the childhood friends, Veraska has tragedy, Stryker has the rival. They already healed and patched things up because it was just a misunderstanding. So unless you write more dilemmas or rewrite the reconciliation, it's just okay. Would be crazy if Blitz was the homewrecker to Fizzy, but feels like that ship has already sailed and after everything that's happened, what would cheating add besides that being your thing? Alright, moving on. Blitz X Luna! Stop it. <laughs> Like, would you, why, what do you even want me to say to this? I'm not about to dive into any nonsense that would make this happen, as just describing it, just out of context, would get my ass roasted. Nah, don't need that in my life. I think these two are great in their weird father-daughter situation. Adding anything like that to this is me hiding in a bunker territory, as on so many levels, no, just not gonna do it. Just watch Bojack and Sarah Lynn from the horse show. That's kind of this, but worse and better. The logistics are a nightmare, but nobody is putting their ass on the line to justify it. Moving on to something less controversial, Blitz dating the M&Ms. You're such a good boss. Yeah, I really want you, sir. Me too. Let's three way. It's all right. See, this is one of those ships I think could absolutely grab someone, but personally, I think most of the fans of this throuple are just Blitz Moxie stands who just don't want to be home wreckers. But I think the reason this one doesn't hit is that I think it's antithetical to everything Blitz needs. Blitz wants to sleep with them. He fantasizes about the three of them hooking up constantly. He stalks and rubbernecks their relationship whenever he can, as he is secretly jealous of everything that they have. The pure wholesomeness of the M&Ms is something that Blitz desperately wants, but he doesn't believe he'll ever have it. So to just give him that relationship feels like we're just sidestepping all the personal growth that Blitz needs to undergo. And we're just giving him the reward. Not to mention it dives into that gray area of where friendship and romance should be. As I think I get more out of the Eminem's being Blitz's life just as friends than any relationship. As he needs their friendship more than he'll ever need their bodies. And this ship is just Blitz trying to insert himself into somebody else's happiness when really he needs to work on himself. This isn't bad there's potential, but I personally see more reasons for it not to happen than for it to, with the potential art of Moxie getting double teamed not doing much for me. So while it's a fun thought experiment, I can only kind of get the appeal. So this one is not for me. Like a bitch. Oh god, what a 
have you done? Ah, finally, the crack ship. Martha and Miss Mayberry. Martha ruined Mayberry's life by sleeping with her husband, getting caught in the act, leading to a double murder-suicide, which kicked off the series. At first you think Martha is just a serial cheater who likes to take up opportunities. But then you find out she's a Buffalo Bill style Satanist. Shit was wild. While she's married and definitely in hell with her husband, I think it would be very interesting to see the two hook up, as it would be fun for the hatred of Martha realizing that she's the one who hired the M's, seeking revenge, only to find out that the sinners can't really kill each other, with the sexual tension then leading them to leaving their husbands. As Mayberry realizes that she was never as good as she thought she was. And yeah, that she kinda deserves to be here, so she might as well have fun with it. So, I'm just gonna put this in 7 out of 10. As yeah, I'm here for the fan art. Sue me. <laughs> That's hot. Now, I already said my spiel about Luna needing more friends than lovers in her life. But yeah, this would be hot. I feel like the biggest barrier for this is that I feel like we don't really know Tex. He spends more time being the object of Luna's desires than anything on his own. He's one of the party parents. He keeps things professional. Everything about him screams solid dude, with me not really getting anything outside of that. Out of all the characters in Hellboss, Tex is probably the guy I'd most easily say yes to hang out with. But him and Luna is kind of just a curiosity. It's interesting in what it could do for Luna, yet the insecurity and nervousness from someone who's usually so cynical could be achieved with just anybody she's crushing on. I do love how Tex takes Luna under his wing, making sure that the scared puppy is getting socialized. She really does need to meet other people after spending life at basically prison. But that doesn't have to be specifically romantically coded. Tex could just be a decent guy helping somebody out. So while it would be cute, Tex and Luna are a relationship where you can get everything you want out of it via friendship. Maybe work in a homewrecker angle with B, but while I can see why people would want this man and by proxy want Luna to want him, yeah, I see you. This one, I'm just gonna peg as see the vision. Though I'm gonna be honest, I do feel generous putting it that high. Now the next one is a little bit funny to me. Alessi and Krim aka Moxie's dad and his silent number two man, who hasn't said a word but has stood by Krim's side through most of their appearances, even protecting him in that one shot. So this one is entertaining as it works as kind of a big fuck you to Krim's whole deal. As yeah, the man is a wife murdering child abuser, who's also homophobic, so it feels weirdly fitting to take the monster that he is in the show, then unravel him just a little bit as you imagine that all of his homophobia is him repressing his sexuality, making his hatred for his son being bi all the more personal than just him being a bigot. He's pretty much that one meme about closet Republican senators. But if we're gonna do that, he needs to be banging somebody. And after Millie killed every extra, Alessi was pretty much all we had left on the table. Beginning a fan forbidden romance about a mafia don and his second in command, despising what they're doing but can't stop themselves. As while it's wrong, it just feels so right. Not to mention the angle of Alessi being this royal bodyguard figure that is just way too common in romance novels. This is just a trashy romance novel that your mom would read, but with men. And after seeing what a dick Krim was in the show, I think that's the kind of smear that he would hate the most, so it's only right that we do it. I'm not sure I like this ship as much as I like the description, but the insult and injury is very much appreciated. So, so I think I'm just gonna put this as a 7 out of 10, as I like them. But something being my fave has to mean something. And I don't think I've ever gone looking for these two together. It always just appears, and when it's there, I think it's fine. Now this is gonna be interesting. Moxie ex Stolis. If you don't know, Moxie has more ships than anybody in this series. If they have a pulse, Moxie is being paired with them. Something about Richard Horwitz swearing, his theater kid energy, and the self-insert ability is yeah, we love Blitz, but most of us would honestly be Moxies in this story. But Moxie and Stolis, it's something? I kinda don't have an opinion on it. Moving past Stolis leaving Blitz for Moxie, or Mox leaving Millie, I think these two are just kind of all right together. I think there's something here as I can feel these two would vibe with their nerdy kid energy. Unless you bring back cold, powerful Stolas, this feels like a case of us getting too much of the same thing. Not to mention no part of them interacting couldn't be done with different people. Like, oh boy, Stolas has an imp fetish. Blitz. Bo, Moxie actually can communicate, but he's still a bottom. Millie. Maybe he could take charge of a relationship for a chain. Literally any other ship. There might be something here, but it's not really for me. They haven't really interacted enough in the show to give me an idea of what they would be like together, and what would make them unique, as whenever they are, it's just professional. So let's move on to... FBI, open up! You know, 
People still give me shit for the clickbait and just assumed I actually shipped these two together. Like every once in a while as a diss, people bring up that I ship these two. My thumbnails are too powerful and people don't really care what I say as assuming is more fun, which fair. Though for these two, again, better as sisters, Octavia and Luna will get a lot out of being in each other's lives with Luna helping Octavia through her parents' divorce, being the big sister to a lonely, depressed teen, while Luna can finally be responsible for somebody else, allowing her to let someone in and soften up her rough edges as she is trying to fight literally everyone else that she meets, as Luna is afraid of being hurt. So that makes this sisterly relationship a must. Not to mention when their dads hook up, this would be step incest, and Octavia's a minor. So just gonna put this in nah, bro, as if you don't know the ages, I can see why you'd like it. The animation doesn't really give you a strong hint to exactly how old everyone is. So... Moving on. All right, the next three are joke ships that somehow all ended up right next to each other. Don't know how it happened, but here we are. First off, Maimon x Money. Never has there been a true love in this show. As truly, after everything we've seen, it's confirmed that Maimon would do anything for her. Though we all know Money's true love is Kaiki. Tangent, it's really hard to not recommend the Monogatari series, but it's also very hard to recommend it, because it is insane and the main character is edging Pedialyte, incest, and other shit constantly. But the show is still fascinating. Mamonix Money though goes in to stop it, cause he doesn't need any more. Next we got Blitzex Therapy. Look, the man needs us like a diabetic needs insulin. He's in therapy, but I'm not sure just how seriously he's taking that shit. As to me, it sounds like he's probably using his therapist to trauma dump on, as he doesn't feel comfortable talking to any of his co-workers about this out of fear of them thinking less of him. The man needs this. Now for the joke ship that nobody who's doing this list online will get without context. This is Luna X Self Insert. You know the kind of freaks up there who drool all over you. Now I'm really just here to give my take on self-insert fanfics, like the straight it's you category. If you write, enjoy, or make any of this stuff, honestly, respect. It's a little weird to me, but I was also a shy overthinker as a teen, so the idea of putting myself into a story was just way too bold, and I would have been terrified of being seen as cringe. But if the story isn't too bad or self service -y like the stalker guy, I don't think it's the worst thing in the world, as it is just the most pure form of the power fantasy. But so mask off about it, that unless it's like a weird author insert thing, I kind of have to half respect it. There's an extreme where it gets way too weird, Well, that's pretty much every story known to man. But just like how the internet reacted to Twilight, because it was fiction for young women, the imprinting stuff can go die though, straight self-insert shipping feels like something that we were trained to hate or throw side eye at, more than it's actually bad in of itself. As there's some paper-thin characters out there that honestly might as well stop pretending that this isn't just supposed to be the audience or the author. The more honest about it that it is, the quicker we can get to hating it for the reasons that it actually she deserves to be hated for. So while it may not be for me, I respect the vision. Though I do think a lot of those stories tend to slide into the ick. But then again, I play RPGs, so who am I to judge? And all I had to do was not fool for you. Which is where my nice, simple plan fell apart. Follow that little rant up with the daddy combo. Yeah. Cash and Paymon. Because why not? Voiced by the same guy, both are terrible fathers who view their sons as commodities instead of people, these assholes are pretty much the broken crusty stolets, and that's very funny to me for some reason. Paymon is a pompous dick who couldn't even be bothered to show up for the father-son outing he suggested, instead appearing via Zoom and insisting that they go to a private section because he could still smell the poor people through the mirror. He and Cash, while not having any real sexual tension, do feel like they would just make great business partners partners, or even in-laws who are actively plotting to ruin their son's marriage. Well, of course bragging about what a good parent they were when they were nothing of the sort. Like, I'm not expecting anything out of these two but comedy, and that's honestly good enough for me. Plus, seeing Blitz and Stoltz react to this would almost be worth willing it into existence. So I'm going to see the vision, as it's not really about them, but I like the potential. Speaking of potential, Stryker and Stolas. <laughs> Blitz's knife is bigger. And hit so much deeper. Bitches, bros, non-binary hoes. This one is hard. I feel like I should like this way more than I actually do. But when I look at it, all I see is Stolitz in angry cowboy cosplay. Like a reskin character in a fighting game. It's a different thing, but you know it's not. 
I will say that Stolz and Stryker could be fun in a similar way that Blitz and Stryker could be. Stryker refusing to change, Stolz wanting a relationship, but Stryker just hard stopping any of that. As his actual resentment of Royals, while willing to sleep with one, will never let him actually grow closer. It's built to be a slow burn or casual bang sesh, to make the dysfunction of Stolz work in its present dysfunctional self. But if I wanted to watch that, I might as well watch the original. I think the fan art of these two would be fire, I can see the hogtied vision. I just can't really bring myself to say that I love it or even want it. If it exists, cool. If it doesn't, I'll lose zero sleep. Both these men are hot enough on their own, but I don't really think they have enough chemistry to make me really desire it. So, it's all a moot point. This is not for me, but if it's for you, glad you can make it work. Moving on... Oh boy! I have thoughts. Can you even do one thing right? Can't you finally do something about how fat you are? Moxie and Luna. This feels like it just has to exist. Like the pure proximity of the two characters, the fact that they don't like each other, Moxie being so self-insertable, Luna being just rule 34 bait. This is a matchup made for the internet. And I'm just, eh, not big into shipping Luna with anybody. Insert. It should have been me, not him. It's not fair. Moxie's in a perfectly happy relationship with Millie. So whenever we talk about Moxie being with anybody, we gotta always have that convo of what happened to her. Regardless of this is cheating, divorce, or they just met before, I always have to ask, does this ship justify breaking up the M&Ms, and how would it be different? Come on, you know why. Basically, she'd be a nag and he'd be her bitch. Like, say that he'd take charge fantasies at the door. Luna X Moxie is the kind of thing that works best in fan art without context. Because yeah, you could justify a story about Moxie standing up for himself, earning Luna's respect, or even getting her to open up with his sincerity and charm. But the problem with all that is, we haven't gotten any hints of it. No, what we have instead is just one joke. I am not. Luna's insecure, so she picks on Moxie to force him back at the bottom of the social ladder, ganging up on him with her dad as that's how they bond during office hours. Moxie's insecure too, but he doesn't really respect Luna. He was so happy the day Blitz tried to talk to her about working on her customer service, which is a must for her job. But Moxie heard a man threaten to replace his adopted daughter, and he was all for it because he can't stand Luna. As he thrives on rules, so to see her flaunt it, it just feels particularly egregious to him. I can see this happening if this was kind of a high school AU, but in story, for the material that we have, it's just kind of eh. I would like to see them bury the hatchet, but their relationship isn't that deep, and even if her insults live rent-free in his head, that's more of a moxie problem than a them thing. She needs to chill out, he needs to grow a spine, but neither needs to be achieved or is enhanced by them dating. Though I'm sure there's great fan art somewhere, Millie's existence and how cute the M&Ms are means that this ship is just dead in the water. So, not for me it goes, as again, I need more of them in story to flesh out their dynamic so I can do the mental gymnastics to get them there. Kind of like what I'm doing with the next one, Striker x Veraska. Now these two have never met. They have not interacted outside of being next to each other in Blitz's hallucinations. But honestly, hey, that's enough, I've got what I need. Everything I've said about Stryker, about being Blitz's worst half, kind of makes him perfect for Veraska, as his temper and strength and general shittiness makes him the perfect rebound. I could totally see these two hooking up just purely to spite Blitz, tied together by a mutual love of talking shit about this other guy, with from there it could blossom into something more. It's not gonna be healthy, I mean Stryker is clearly more in love with himself than he will be with any partner, but they would have a fire country album, and the fallout from the divorce would be funny as fuck. There's just something here about two people obsessing over another guy just so much that they hook up almost unintentionally. Also, Stryker is a narcissistic jackass, but I am curious to see if just he would be a better partner than Blitz. Don't really see much southern gentleman here, but it feels like he would nail the formal things of dating, with his hot idea for a first date being square dancing or some shit. Or Veraska just has no idea what to do with these people, but hell, she'd probably kill the dance anyway. I don't see this being deep, but it would be fun. They never met, but they feel like a couple that would have tons of fun things you could do with them. From antagonizing Blitz to Veraska finally realizing that maybe she doesn't hate Blitz that much. Lots of potential, so I'm just gonna put them in 7 out of 10. It could almost be a problematic fave, but the next one definitely is and I don't love them nearly as much as I love Striker x Stella. Yes ma'am. Glorious. 
Stole it's his endgame, but I'm still convinced that Stolen Striker should be an abusive power couple. It's like Krim bottoming his bodyguard, yeah that's fun. It takes the piss out of a homophobe. Stella and Stryker would be great though because they would be everything that they claimed to hate. Stryker is an imp who hates the royals for looking down on imps, even though he himself looks down on imps. He embodies a lot of those same racist tendencies, referring to Moxie as vermin or calling Blitz and himself exceptions above the regular riffraff of their kind, showing that for all his talk about eating the rich, he's a Adopted their mentality to a certain extent. Meanwhile, Stella is everything he hates about the royals, being a pampered elitist and viewing Stoll sleeping with an imp as a personal insult, especially when it happened in her bed. This woman was ready to kill Stolz over having a relationship with him. There's more to it, most of those just her being petty, but all of Stryker and Stella's hypocrisy combined, it would just be peak. It would be so funny for them to give Stolz all the shit only to fall into basically the same situation. No in my mind, it would be something close to what Stolz was originally. A contractual bang sesh filled with self loathing attraction, and refusal to admit that they care. It would be Stolz and Stryker, but actually good. Stella, for all of her mouths at Stolz, for all her implied racism, we've yet to see her specifically demean an imp outside of harassing Stolz. So the idea for her actually sleeping with one is still in the realm of possibility. Not to mention that the two are fairly cordial to one another. Stella is demanding, but when she calls off the hit, she's very mad at the fact she tells him that she'll still pay him, she's calling him darling, Stryker calls her ma'am, and while he despises royals, he still works for her. So you can twist that into something more than it actually is. Nobody's changing for the better in this ship. They will still be awful, but they feel like they would be great compliments to what would otherwise be fairly standard villains. Stella is great at being awful, Stryker is getting increasingly unhinged, so the two of them hooking up would be just... It would be hilarious, with Souls probably having a stroke if he saw it happen. As after all the nastiness she's thrown his way, Fizzy was hypocritical. But this is something else entirely, as they truly have invested their entire personalities into being haters. So them fighting love together would be just too good. Especially if they got caught. Some people call it sacrilege, but I'm calling it top tier. Alright, next up we got Luna x Beelzebub. Now if I rank them any higher than text, I do it just because lesbians. And you know what? Okay, no, not really. But B and Luna, they are an interesting one. As I feel like all my opinions about them are almost identical to what I said about Tex. Luna needs friends, not lovers. Well, I think that they could be more and it would be easy to get behind, as B is a party girl who does have a responsible side, which does add a little more spice to the even-keeled Tex. I think in spite of that being the easier pitch, I think I'm just gonna put these two as about the same level. As yet, yeah, it's more marketable, but seeing Luna fall for someone who just initially she resented and felt insecure about is just getting Korosami all over again. So if I was ranking this within any kind of owner within a tier, it might rank higher than Tex because male gaze. Tex, I think, is probably the better ship. I do think that we do have a better idea of who B is versus who is Tex, who is always trapped just a little a bit with us mostly seeing him from Luna's point of view, which is kind of sexy lamp territory, where you could replace him with a sexy lamp and not lose a whole lot. But I think for what Tex is, he's solid. B just got way more chances to be fun, so for Luna and B, I just see the vision. Okay, got it. No fix about Tex helping Luna escape her dad? Cool. Next, we got Krim and Moxie. Honestly, I almost forgot that I put this in here, and that I also forgot to put in Veroska and Barbie Wire, which Give me a second. So we might as well talk about that one first. So Veroska and Barbie Wire, it feels like just a better version of what Blitz and Veroska had. We know that the two allegedly met at rehab. They're both retired pop stars. Veroska's her career's still going, but Barbie Wire has been through the ringer. She has done a lot. She has had an addict's journey to recovery with Veroska by her side through some of it. So the fact that the two of them hate Blitz so, I think they would be very spicy together. I'm not entirely behind it as like, I don't love love it, but it's just a very easy thing to ship in my mind. It doesn't have the same complications of Veroska hooking out with Stryker, which is like, oh, this is full villain couple. Barbie Wire and Veroska feels like it is just a return to normalcy, that they are able to recover, that they'll still not like Blitz, but they'll be able to move on from their lives and that they'll be able to realize just how much better they are with each other in it. So for them, I think they are a strong seven out of 10. I I see the vision, and I like it just a little bit more. Alright, now to the father-son's thing. 
Now take care of the others. I can't remember if this was a fan suggestion or if my brain just assumes someone had to like it, but this is just gonna be another stop it for me. Like, I get it. Krim is just moxie, but hotter. He's rocking the guy liner, but no amount of unpacking toxic masculinity and peer pressure is gonna have me devils advocating these two in public. I don't think I would do it in private, as this is just a shitty, shitty situation, as we have the M&Ms or Krim Lessy. So all that energy that we have can just go somewhere else. Though, if I'm being honest, I would pay money to hear their voice actor do a sex scene with these two, as this fucking voice... They want to be the dominant species on the planet, and they'll destroy us all to make it happen! Like, it's not even about Krim and Mox anymore, it's just comedy. Does immaturely insulting me make you feel better about your sad, single life? It actually does. Okay, Blitz and Moxie. I threw a little bit of shit at them in the Thrupple one earlier, but Blitz and Moxie are another one where I'm just, cool, it's a thing. It's something that feels almost too easy that I don't ship it. Hellaboss started with these two yahoos. Originally, they are going to be villains that would appear in has -been before they were spun off and retooled to be their own thing. So much of Season 1 is geared around their relationship, and so much so that it feels inevitable that people would ship them, as they form the comedic duo of Blitz being wild and inappropriate to Moxie's straight man no-nonsense, with the two of them checking each other, and that would just create comedy. This might be me just resisting trying not to be too basic, but I don't care for the ship. I like their dynamic, I think they can be great when they're put together, please God stop making making Moxie the main character in episodes, but this isn't a case where I need them to be romantic. Blitz needs self-growth. Moxie needs self-confidence. So having them hook up just feels clunky, as Moxie will be sleeping with the authority figure he craves validation from while Blitz is sleeping with Moxie, which feels like an in-theory situation. Blitz would never let Moxie live that down, which actually would be the fun side of things. thing. Another thing about Moxie is low-key ashamed and embarrassed, but Blitz just keeps constantly bringing this thing up. So much so that Mox would almost wish that they would go back to making fun of each other. That would be peak comedy, though that could actually happen in the show, and we wouldn't even have to have them dating for it to happen. Moxie works best when he's on the back foot and he's a supporting character, so I think it would be hilarious to have Blitz hold that over on him, and for Blitz to be just way too into the relationship. Like, there's something here. I don't think it would be as good as some other people do, but I can kind of see the vision. Anyway, y'all remember my husband, Moxie. Again, we are cutting Millie out of the situation in this scenario, which would not be fun. Which, uh, okay, I'm just gonna just undo what I said. The idea of Moxie and Blitz hooking up in a one night stand is hilarious, as Blitz would not be chill or quiet about it. In fact, he'd probably become stolen a little bit, while Moxie would be the one who just wants to get over with while secretly caring. So we're gonna move that throuple into See the Vision, a Moxie and Blitz on its own, not it for me. I think that's a fair compromise, as them just being in a straight romantic relationship doesn't do it for me. But the cringe of the morning afterwards would. And of course, they would be better as friends. Fair? <laughs> what is up, party people? Okay, Chaz and Moxie. They kind of suck. Chaz is a one-note joke who, while entertaining in short bursts, I don't really ever feel like I need to see him again. He's got one bit and ran it into the ground. There's a fun story to be told about the two hooking up when they were young. This Chaz being an idiot who railed the Don's son. But this was more of a relationship about showing what not to do and accepting that. Chaz did seem to feel genuine guilt about ditching Moxie the night of the crime, but none of their interactions are really endear me to them as a couple, nor make me theorize about what might have been. Chaz is a sex pest, a plot device, with a big dick that he apparently couldn't use. He's a frat guy with just as little personality. This is nah bro for me. Everything we really could do with them was done. Next up we got Million Verosica. Now we don't know Millie's sexuality, and for shipping purposes, it really doesn't matter. Yeah, 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 queer erasure. No! You know, I know, I got it, I got the concept. Well, that's why I have certain trends that make that stuff an issue, I vibe with Veroska and Millie. As while they barely talk to each other, Millie's fuck off attitude toward Veroska in a nice little interaction where she's the one who blackmails a pop star into letting them win, did endear me to the two of them just a little bit. Plus, Millie is interested to know what sex with her is like. Veroska, from what we see, is kind of a bitch, and Millie takes no shit, which is just a dynamic I've always adored, whether it's directed at each other or just at other people. We know Millie can give as good as she gets, so these two hang out and train barbs does sound like a good time. Maybe Millie replaces Tex as Veroska's bodyguard and starts running the harem. It's not deep, but I would check it out. See the vision they go? All right. Now for the Targaryens over here. Oh, you're so lucky you're attractive. I'm gonna say it. I don't think anything non-sibling is going on between them in the show. 
And Truffis has big that bitch energy. If this show had the real housewives of hell, he'd be there in a heartbeat, being faker than a $3 bill. Does Androphis manipulate his sister for his own benefit? Oh, 100%. But in context of royal inbreeding, I don't really see the appeal. With the, At least with the other cell ships, there's something deliciously bad or fun. These two, when you think about it, it's just kind of sad. As your mind drifts to, well, nobody's happy, when the hell did this happen, with any answer to those questions just not being really fun to think about. I don't hate hate it, but I don't really care for it, which is honestly worse. So I'm putting in Nabro as it's doing nothing for nobody. Next up, we have Androphis and Stolas. Like, they'd be fun as sassy gay best friends in royal parties, but no real romantic hook here. You'd really have to shift it into a period drama where they had this taboo relationship, making Stella this jilted wife. But that saying would work even better with Blitz being the gardener who knows how to work a hoe. Not against it. This definitely felt like something that felt more fun in Fanon when we just only had his design. As you could imagine a lot with this look. It's inoffensive, but it just... It doesn't call to me. Long that up with another nothing burger, and that's Veroska and Tex. This ship honestly felt like it could have been way more of a thing if B hadn't been introduced. As that feels like the space the two would have been in. Tex is professional, making sure that she's protected, while she appreciates him and would be a bit more on the wild side. But anything they could do, B and Tex would do better. It's terrible, but it's true. But this one could be for somebody, so I'm just gonna call it not for me. As I'm sure there's somebody deep in the trenches and in denial for these two. Though at that point, it's probably just someone who hates Luna and Tex. This idea for a duo performance between us that should spice up your act. Yeah, nah, bro. Like, I'm sure somebody has this fantasy, but no amount of hear me out is going to justify this pairing. Spinning yarn how it would have worked if they worked together in the stalker turned his life around. Yeah, I know he has an actual name, but it feels better to just call him what it is. The stalker was obsessed with Fizz, and everything else you could feel with him does feel more like a slash fan fiction, which shockingly has never appealed to me. I know. I'd assume otherwise too. Just to be clear, I already own this look. So I, yeah, I was a little worried when I saw the new episode. That I remembered it's just a shaggy thing, so I'm probably okay. Yeah, unless this is specifically your thing, I'm just gonna put this in stop it and move on. Wait, did I fucking not put Tex and B on this list? I am dropping the ball here. All right, Tex and B. Honestly, I dig them. They are very fun together. While throwing Luna into the mix is just okay, we're kind of doing the same thing with either one of them. I think together they are adorable. Tex is the chill strong man to B's wild party girl energy. They are having a lot of fun together. They adore each other. And while not everything is great as B is all over the place, you can tell that they have a lot of love. And when something's going wrong, they work together to solve it. While Luna Tex has that father figure older brother thing going on, with B, you kind of just have to appreciate it as the man is dating up. This is one of the leaders of hell and she's dating him, the bodyguard of a pop star. That's crazy. That's awesome. That is honestly, when you look at it, it's like, no, that would happen. He is too solid that he honestly would just make this work or feel like he has to prove anything to her. They're great together. And honestly, yeah, I put them as 7 out of 10. As when I think about it, I really like it. But the fact that I forgot to put them in here does speak to the fact that they don't really grip me as much as I think I would like. They don't have that, oh, I want to see them in this situation. It's just, I really like them when they show up. But I don't ever think about like, oh, what else could they be? But next one, Vraska x Fizz. Honestly, this is just Striker Vraska, but worse. It would just be, oh, we hate Blitz kind of thing. But since the supremacy that has been Fizzy showed up, the, this whole ship and Fizz with any other character has just been dead in the water narratively. Especially since reveal that Fizz has never been a terrible person. The fun of them being haters together is just not there. I can see them getting together to talk shit. They'll hype each other up in their performances. But if you came to this couple for any reason, you'd be better served looking elsewhere. Not terrible, but sadly since season one, all of its strengths have been undercut or stolen by other people. So while they would destroy a duet, they weirdly feel like people who know Blitz rather than people who would bond and thrive over hating him. Which is just the tragedy of emotional stability. Not for me, but I do think somebody could do something with them. I'm just way too invested in my striker AUs. Speaking of which, Melee X Striker. Not as good as Moxie X Striker, but I can actually really envision like an evil world AU or dream sequence where Moxie imagines his life if he never met Millie. Where he goes to Wrath only to discover that she's married to Striker, where they're probably happy ish, but he's more of that dude her parents want to marry than somebody she'd pick for herself. She's not loving it, and she's only a little bit miserable. But I do think they would have a blast working on the farm together. Maybe it's what helped her decide to stay in Pride then move back to Wrath. To stay in freelance. 
but Stryker's hokey persona would never see him leave Wrath, and his ego would just probably grate on her nerves. While not the hottest pairing in the world, I would definitely see a lot of potential here, especially in that bad future type setting, where you can just really get weird with it. Maybe they'll become the greatest bounty hunters in Wrath, maybe Stryker tried to make her into a housewife, only to get gutted for it. The ship has options, so much so that I'm just gonna put it in 7 out of 10 on just that alone, as I really want to see what people would write for that fanfic. Now, next is... <laughs> Oh, people are so fucked for this one. All right, Stolas x Stella. People really love seeing people be miserable together, and I get it. Now, we're not gonna try and rationalize this one. Stella and Stolas are miserable together. Stella is apparently just abuse incarnate, strangling her pets and abusing her servants. Though the not divorced party is a great idea, I think if you're trying to look into the dysfunctional dynamic of their marriage, maybe even a rewrite where you're trying to explain why they're both like this, that Stella wasn't just pure evil. But I think for me, everything I get out of Stella, I already get with her now. So I don't really need them to keep being a couple, as yeah, they both got screwed by their parents. But no amount of it will make this ship that hot to me, or really make me want to see them together in any capacity that isn't a courtroom. Stella is fun on her own. I like Stola standing up to her, yet them fighting only has so much mileage, and at this point, it's barely even a ship. It's reality. So these two are nah, bro. Like, I can get why, or why people would want to salvage their relationship, so that things aren't so clear-cut. But for what it is, it's over. Ship has sailed, and nobody's on it. Expand on that one photo in the comments. Alright, who else we got? Oh, no! Fuck it. Vaggie and Charlie are boring as shit. Yeah, all we have to go off is just the pilot in a trailer. I don't care. I've already done more with less, so suck it up. It's your comfort shit. Cool. But it's not 2019 anymore. The show already got greenlit. We don't have to keep pretending this pilot is a masterpiece anymore, just like the ship. Charlie is a Disney princess in hell. That's hilarious. It's a comedic gold mine. She seems delightful, excited, a little bit all over the place, but her heart is in the right one. Then we have Vaggy, and from everything we've seen, she seems cool. The pragmatist of Charlie's idealism, trying to get her girlfriend's plans up and running on things that aren't dreams and optimism. She's a bit in the background in the pilot, but that's no real crime. However, Charlie and Vaggy give me big Harl Ivy vibes from the Quinn show. Which is my shorthand for it. the show thinks a couple is way more lovable than they actually are. Yeah, that shit show is gonna get its own video. But what's relevant for here, that while adorable and healthy and sure to comfort some people who didn't have many options, the vibe I get from the pilot is that Charlie and Vaggy balance each other out. That Vaggy's able to ground Charlie, and Charlie's able to brighten the other's day. No, the vibe I get is that Vaggy has to manage Charlie. Oh sure, it's not problematic, but its big main character can do whatever the hell they want becomes whimsy, then everyone else, and especially Vaggy, are left to pick up the pieces when shit hits the fan. They're a cute couple, sure, but the trick here, much like in Harley Quinn, is that it feels like what's supposed to be endearing can easily be seen as a chore for the other person. Even when said hopefulness is not a bad thing on its own. Charlie and Vaggy are adorable, sure, but in the grand scheme of things, people have way more headcans than actual canon at this point. And if this is your favorite ship, Congrats. You like the inoffensive gal pals that love and look adorable together. They're so perfect. Even though they're just Rapunzel and Cass, but worse. It will never stop being funny to me that the staple ship for this show is less popular than Angel Dust and Alistair. Like, they really had every advantage and still lost. That all said, I see the vision. The ship's gonna be better when we get the show, but for what we have so far, I'm not impressed. Okay, I follow that rant up with Luna and the party dog. Honestly, he seems fine. I got no strong feelings for him, just a dude, he was here. But he seems to have slotted himself less into being the love interest and more like he's just part of Luna's friend group. Like the dude, if they go to date, will feel like a consolation text. Let's hate some, which honestly is just points in his favor. But no strong feelings here. Could be something, could be nothing, so this is going in... You know what, if I had a tier between Not For Me and Nabro, he'd be there. But in this case, I'm just gonna round down. Alright, Angel Dust and Alistair. For those who don't know, Alistair is asexual, though you never know based on all the thirst traps. That's its own issue, but going strictly on the shipping, I don't 
don't give a fuck about them. I'm not an Angel Dust hater, but it always just felt so typical that Angel Dust would be the character people would latch on to. Strong Tumblr Man vibes with this one, wrapped in sarcasm and drenched in Whoopi backstory. Dude could suck, and he would still be popular purely based on his tropes. Alistair? Okay, he actually kind of lives up to his hype as a villain who's clearly helping this place out for his own amusement. He's basically the Black Butler in red, mixed with Dr. Facilier's power set. I like him, but the idea of the two of them hooking up feels like a match made in Hot Topic. Angel Dust is hypersexual, Alistair is having none of it, but the only real interaction that would make us, oh, there's something here, is how Angel was the one person like get a little bit underneath his skin in the pilot. You could do something with them, but it doesn't grab me personally. It's essentially the celebrity couple of the has-been fandom, so not for me. Alright, now we got Millie and Luna. Yeah, yeah. This couple is going up higher than Moxie and Luna. While these two are basically just okay, I do feel like they would be way more fun than him. As while Moxie's gonna hold on to that insult to the day he dies, Millie's gonna be the one who fights back. Millie is the only person in the office who feels like she can actually push back against Luna's bullshit, to maybe even put her in her place a little bit. Blitz is too much of a smother to actually apply discipline, or at least without devolving into too far territory. Luna doesn't take Moxie seriously, so there's nothing he can really do. So it's really just Millie who can cut through the bullshit and just call her on all of it. This is something that we've had brief snippets of throughout the series, though it's never really explored too much. There are some things that I would love to see covered, from Millie's outright dismissiveness of Luna, frequently referring to her as just the Hellhound, which given how Hellhounds are treated in Hell, is a little bit of a yikes. I think there's a dynamic begging for us to get more insight on. I'm headcanning that Millie was the babysitter that Blitz hired that one time he got sent to prison, which will explain why Millie is already so over Luna. Like, Nightmare as a ship, I just want more opportunities for the two of them to interact. And if you do ship them, they are a way easier sell as equals than Moxie and Luna ever could. And when these two aren't fighting each other, they're killing everybody else. So I'm just saying, I see the vision, as I don't really have enough hype to put it any higher. Next up is Striker and Krim, because unless he wasn't vocal enough, and we need a Striker Moxie pairing that had a prayer of happening. These two could happen, same deal with making Krim into guys, it's an F you to the man, but for them specifically, I don't get strong couple vibes. They're both hat fanatics, which is easily their biggest commonality besides hating Imp. But these two together are more of a thought experiment than something I actually think people would fully love, as Alessi is already doing the job so much better. Striker and Krim are just the villains hooking up, which we have plenty enough already, so this one is going in nah. Which brings us to another controversy. Krim x the wife he murdered. Now this one, I think is interesting. As the appeal from what I gather is that it's not just what they were with Moxie. The appeal seems to be, what were they before him? Did Krim ever actually love her before they had Moxie? And it was in raising their son that the worst parts of him bubbled to the surface. Was he actually kind at some point, but being in the life and the expectations of being the boss ruined him? There is a smutty novel to be written about these two somewhere. One that ends in tragedy, or one where she fixes him. Which yeah, I can see why people would be into that, even when the actual conclusion is what it is. But I do see the intrigue and want to explore how they end up in this marriage, why they are the way that they are, with it being easiest to explore that when they are a couple. I don't love it, but I would read that story. Nothing about them when they were actually with Moxie though. Okay, let's be real. Obviously. Fizzy, there is no question that these two weren't going in top tier. I've done more than enough videos on them to share my thoughts, but it is peak fiction to watch the sin of lust, the man who should be the most horny and most aggressive in hell, to fall into such an unambiguously healthy relationship with somebody like Fizz, who after all he's been through, needs all the help he can get. Especially when it involves getting out of his abusive relationship with Mammon. Busy is top tier, it stole us but with the ability to actually communicate, and that's a thing that makes them better providing a bomb for our souls as we are just giving all the feels as we watch these two love each other. As they are the closest we're gonna get to Stolitz for a while longer. Watch my other videos if you want more depth as they speak for themselves. Now, Mammon and Fizz. Yeah, this is a hard one. It's not good, it's a very shitty relationship, with most of the fanfics just really digging into all of that, because really, what else are you gonna do with them? Mammon probably already sleeps with the robots seeing as he has one on each arm when he's watching the pageant. I don't think there's anything redeemable about this one. So these two are definitely in stop it territory. But let's follow up the nightmare fuel with the M&Ms. I will kill for you until the day we die. 
Yeah, they're top tier. Again, before Fizzy, these two were the most wholesome couple in hell. No amount of danger could be thrown at them that they couldn't handle together. While not spicy like some of the other couples in this list, the pure love and affection that they had really elevates them above everyone else. This show needs these two. For all the conflict, all the turmoil that's happened in Moxie's life, you understand why he needs Millie as his rock and why she adores him in turn. This woman would kill everyone and anyone to protect him, which is why they have some of the best displays of love in the entire series. Their sex may be boring, but they're the only ones you could really call it love making, which is something not a lot of these other couples can say. Though Blitz and his obsession with horses is close. You like a fucking horse! Oh, don't you dare talk sexy to me. You're still on the horse thing? Yeah, Blitz is just a horse girl. He has a thing for horses. A borderline fetish going by some of the horseplay photos. Blitz is honestly adorable in how this is like the only thing he will really allow himself to squee over. The only thing that will allow him to express his uncut love and appreciation for. Like the dude needs one as a pet, but he can't fit it into his apartment, so he buys merch photos and gazes at every horse he meets. The man has liked these animals since he was a kid, and even had his own shipping chart for a horse story in the office. Horses are a Blitz's best friend, and they are 7 out of 10. Alright, next up on the list are the two guys from Veras's crew who showed up at Ozzy's. <laughs> Damn it. This usually works. Alright, Millie and Chaz. This one is like the Moxie and Luna stitch. I do feel like Millie would handle him better than her husband would, as Moxie isn't certain enough to really deal with the situation. And at least with Millie and Chaz, you do have the pleasure of her finally killing him at the end. Yeah, I don't know the actual backstory for them. We're allegedly going to get that later. And all we see from them is Millie being ready to murder him, then being ready to kill him for Moxie's sake, like always. So it's whatever. Follow that riveting discussion with Chaz and Krim. I think this one is purely here because I needed Krim to be in love with Chaz, as I believe that's the only way to explain why Krim would ever believe that this doofus was rich. As yeah, he can roll a nat 20 persuasion check. Dude just rolled up, said trust me, and Krim did. So I knowing what a fuck up he was in the past, like mind blowing. So much of his honestly just makes more sense if he was secretly into him. So at least then you have distracted by sexy. I don't think this ship is good. I don't think it's bad. It just feels like it should exist if we don't have the exact logic to back it up. Not for me. Moving on. Yeah, another joke one. Stryker X himself, as no woman, man, or really anything is ever gonna love him as much as Stryker does. Dude built a whole statue, and you know he jerks off watching it pretty much every night. And while I like a lot of other ships, I do have to admit that this one is definitely endgame. 7 out of 10, no more questions. Any royal Don't you dare. Finish that sentence, clown. Okay, this one I might have more questions. So again, Fizz x Striker. So I think again, Fizz being nice disqualifies him from the villain couple angle. So you take that throw in Striker's massive racist tendencies. You know he'll never let Fizz hear the end of him sleeping with Ozzy. So at the end of the day, I think it would be funny for a little bit. Though I would think it funny if Mammon hired Striker to kill Fizz and gave him a robot Fizz to help do the job. And that's the Fizz he fell in love with. Especially after he dressed up in cowboy crap. But this one, it's just not it. Surely maybe in season 1 they would have had a better shot, but Fizz is all in on Ozzy, so now any other ship feels like a betrayal. So not for me it goes. Next we got Stella X Moxie. Not gonna lie, he's here purely because of the fan art. Don't need any other explanation. Stella is his dommy mommy and Moxie is her sub. Match made in Rule 34? Like, can't even begin to think about how this ship would develop. As a striker, you understand how they got there. But the hoops Moxie would jump through to justify dating Stella would be crazy. Like, best case scenario, she would treat him like a purse dog. She'd be a hypocrite doing it, and Moxie's getting pegged. No further questions. If I had a fan art category, it would go there. But sadly, not for me is all we got. Speaking of which, Luna X Death from Puss in Boots. Now this one, it's special to me. The last wish was an absolute banger that nobody really expected. But there's something that always tickles me about seeing cross fandom ships, as just tracking the thought process for how it came to be is always just a blast. But this one just being a case of everyone in it is hot. They came out around the same time, and they're both wolves. Don't need anything else? I think I've seen enough. And I respect the vision. And yeah, of all the weird ships I've seen, justifying a wolf version of death being in the Hasman verse is honestly one of the easiest cells I've seen. Like, you don't really have to do much work to justify him in the cosmology. He's just death. He's a thing that actually kills people and takes their souls to either heaven or hell. Though in the fact that hell or is an anthropomorphic dog population, the dude would fit right in, making his hookup with Luna all the more believable, especially when you're just glancing. Maybe they can just make him Beelzebub's brother. Dude would fit right in. 7 out of 10, it's fun, and that's all it needs to be. 
Hey there, good looking. Oh, I was wondering how long it would take for you to make a pass. Honestly, I can see Chaz and Bliss being friends. Not lovers, but with their sexual energy, it's no surprise that they hooked up the first time. Only real problem to it happening again is that Chaz sucks at it. So, he's pretty much just a one-time mistake and nothing else. But if the M&Ms ever would were to, you know, reject Blitz, I can see Blitz trying to hook up with Chazzy and just get stories about the M&Ms, as he's really desperate for just any other connection to them. Also, again, Blitz is also a stalker. If you don't think that he jerks off to those tapes, I don't know what to tell you. Blitz is a haha -ha funny example of this, but he's also still a very sad version of it. And even when it's not a sex thing, he'll make it into one. Which is why he and Chaz have all the chemistry. I can't really see myself putting them too high on this list, but out of anyone, Chaz fits the best with Blitz. Still not for me like all the other trash relationships he's in though. <laughs> Moxie has a thing of getting fucked by sharks. Don't know why, but it's a thing. But nah, bro, he's with Millie. Oh, you no good, heartless son of a bitch! Lyle Limpton and Loopty Goopty are fun. They're evil capitalist inventors who experiment on the poor to sell products to the rich. They are textbook evil scientists. But the fact that the reason Loopty wanted to kill Lyle so that he could finally be reunited with his best friend just a little bit sooner is adorable. The revenge to friendship bait is just too good. And I think on the scale of ships, they are just alright. As let's be real, they are kind of a joke pairing. Not hot enough to be horny, and not really deep enough for fanfics. But they are one-offs in the best way possible. So I'll just say I can see the vision, but I'm not ever begging to see them again. But follow that up with Vraska dating her whole posse because, hot, I see the vision. But honestly, for all the shit she and Blitz have thrown at each other, it's nice to imagine that she has an actual friend group that she could hang out with. Though, they could also not really even really work with her. As it was meant, she was just helping out a different agency in the imp building. Meaning they could be temps in this situation, so who really knows? Alright, let's keep moving to the end, Husk and Angel Dust. Yeah, I kinda like this one more than Alistair. I'm sorry, but the idea of Angel Dust like thinking he's doing this old man a favor by banging him, waiting for the tables to be completely turned is just too good. Especially since they hit the opposites of the trauma spectrum, with Angel pretending everything is okay with sarcasm and cynicism, while Husk is just burnt out and annoyed with everybody. So I really just feel like the two could help each other out in a lot of different ways. Maybe they'll be more of a father-son thing in the actual show, but in pure hypotheticals, I can dig it. Not to mention that Husk is voiced by Keith David, who is perfect in everything that he is in. Welcome to hell, motherfucker! <laughs> 7 out of 10. No regrets. Now for the final ship on the list. Of a video I had zero expectations or plans of making it this long. But honestly, I can't pretend that Stolitz isn't top tier. If you know anything about my channel, you know why. I've been talking about these yahoos for years now. With every bout of idiocy making these two just a joy to follow. They're complicated, they're broken, and they need each other in their lives so much. Or at least to just tell each other how they feel so they can finally grow as people. I still don't love them meeting as kids. But that ties more into how I'm just kind of over the complete whoopification of Stolas on a whole than the childhood meeting just being bad on its own. There's just something so endearing to watching these two broken people want to be better. To have literally everything that they could want, yet being too afraid to ask out of fear. With us understanding all the interpersonal reasons for why they just don't really ever follow through on it. So while it's drawn out, you get why. And it feels natural to the characters. Stolas is the reason I started making videos about this show. And my life has never been the same since. So while I love all the ships in the top tier, Fizzy has better communication skills, Stolitz will always be my one true pairing, and nothing is ever gonna change that. Thank you all for watching, this has been Sarcastic Course. If you want to make your own tier list, use a link down in the description, though you will have to add the 7 out of 10, as I kind of screwed up about making mine and realizing I need something more positive than seeing the vision. But this is my complete list. Tell me what you agree with, what you hate, who is your favorite ship? Let me know down in the comments, and maybe one day I'll update this list. As you never know, maybe Hazel will bring a whole new fleet of ships to add in, but that's a problem for later. Peace out, love you all.